Hello my loves, it's Monica and today I am back with a very exciting video. I have a couple of life announcements that I want to share with you all and also I am beginning what is the start of basically my moving vlogs, moving content. So that brings us into my very first announcement which I will get into right after this word from our sponsor which is book of the month so book of the month is a fast growing and popular online book service for readers and their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers discover books they love and here's how it works their team vets hundreds of books each month and gives readers a selection of curated new and early release titles so that you can spend less time researching and more time reading and here are the five books that were selected in the month of September. First, we have The Love Hypothesis. This one I'm so excited for because it plays into the whole fake dating trope, which I love. And we are following fake dating scientists. Love that. <laughs> Next, I have Beautiful Country by Qian Julie Wang. And this one is a memoir in which the author recounts her childhood in New York City and her family being undocumented Americans who immigrated from China to Chinatown in New York. Then we have The Neighbor's Secret. And the tagline for this one is, how well do you really know your neighbors? So basically a domestic thriller. Then we have another romance. This is The Sweetest Remedy. And in this book, our main character travels back to Nigeria to attend the funeral of her um, father who she never knew and while she's there she like meets her very extravagant family for the first time and also develops a romance. And lastly is Rock Paper Scissors and this one is another sort of domestic thriller but it's set in Scotland love Scotland. So yeah, these are the five books that are available from Book of the Month in September. If you would like to check out Book of the Month, I will have them linked in the description box below and you can also use my code which is Monica in order to get your first book for just $9.99. And I love Book of the Month because if you subscribe and you get a month where you're just not really into any of the books, you can very easily just skip that month and you won't be charged. So I think that's awesome along with having like the best price for new release hardcover fiction so again that link will be down below now on to the rest of the video and all of my announcements so yeah I guess we'll dive on in with the big news in that I am moving back to New York City ah! <laughs> it is wild to think that I've been gone from New York City for almost two years I left in the fall of 2019 um, basically because I was dealing with some personal issues um, I had experienced something traumatic uh, and I can't really go into it but it had to do with um, work and that just left me really just not in a great headspace for quite a while and I ended up just having to take a step away from the city um, and I moved in with my sister. Basically I took over my nephew's bedroom. Um, I honestly never really talked about this time of my life. Like I was vlogging and stuff here on YouTube but I think like for me I really struggle like if I'm going through something difficult I cannot for the life of me tell anyone about it. Like it's the kind of thing where until I resolve the issue no one in my life will know that there even is an issue. This is not a great coping mechanism, I am aware of that, <laughs> um, and it's something I definitely need to work on, but yeah, I mean, if you've been following me over the past two years, you probably wouldn't know a lot of this stuff, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I had to leave New York City. I also couldn't afford to live in New York City because uh, I had like left my job and all this stuff. Um, and so I was definitely sort of in dire straits in 2019. It was a rough time for me. Um, also there's a very loud cricket like right outside my bedroom window. So if you hear that, I'm so sorry, but hopefully it just adds to the vibe. Anyways, I was in a really rough situation, like mentally, financially, uh, and I needed to leave. So I left, moved in with my sister, uh, moved into my nephew's bedroom basically because he was away at school and tried to pull myself together um, and then in like December I you know thought I was better I thought I you know I'd made strides and I was like okay I'm ready to go back and I accepted a new job um, 
and I just like basically from the moment that I accepted the job <laughs> for like a week after I just felt constant anxiety and I was like I'm not ready to go back and so I, I pulled out I basically changed my mind um, and I stayed in Pennsylvania which is where I've been for the past couple of years um, and I was like I'm gonna just give myself like a little bit more time find a job that feels like a better fit and in February that is when I was gonna move that was the plan um, and honestly, like I spent then the next like as, as soon as I did that, I just spent days and days and weeks just beating myself up for this like decision that I thought was just the worst possible decision that I could have ever made. Um, and then 2020 happened and it really put a lot into perspective because like if I had accepted that job, I would have moved back to New York City. I would have had a brand new apartment. There's a good chance I probably would have been laid off pretty quickly since I was a brand new hire um, and I have no idea how I would have paid for rent or anything um, and I also just wouldn't have been able to have been you know with my family over the past two years and that has honestly been amazing. You know at times very difficult you know I eventually basically my entire family was living in this house so my sister brother-in-law mom niece and nephew because they both came back from college and me so six people in not a big house uh for a while there i was basically roommates with my mom which i we both love each other very much but i think for both of us that was a lot it <laughs> it's been kind of a interesting couple of years but also like two years that I, I don't want to say that I'm thankful, like I'm not thankful for everything in the world that happened over the past two years, but I am thankful for my family um, and that I spent this amount of time with my family. I've always been that person, like when I was in elementary school and like up, like honestly up into high school, I was always that kid who was like on the phone with their parent asking them to come pick them up from the sleepover like I hated being away from home when I went off to college my high school friends who to be honest I'm no longer friends with all took bets about how long I would be able to stay away from home because I get so homesick um, and so I I love being home um, and so you know I am really grateful for the time that I've had these past couple of years but at the same time um, I do not thrive in Pennsylvania. Um, I, one, can't drive, which I mean, I guess I could fix that, but I hate driving. Uh, and if I don't have to drive, I'd really rather not. Two, there's, as far as work and like things I can actually do, there's really not much here. Um, and I know remote work is becoming more and more accessible and I hope that that continues. But as of right now, um, being in a city is just, makes the most sense for me and then also just like socially i outside of you know my direct family i don't really have like anyone here in pennsylvania who is a friend um and i i definitely need friends again um so yeah i am excited to move back to new york city there were a lot of contenders there was a moment there when i was thinking about LA I'm still thinking about LA to be honest like I always told myself that I'd want to at least like live in LA for a year and just like be full Disney adult <laughs> so maybe one day I'll still do that but yeah for right now New York City makes the most sense it's the closest and like I'm trying not to constantly be really emotional like I keep crying because I am really sad about leaving um, my family because I am definitely back to square one in terms of like homesickness and I'm trying to remind myself that it's literally just like an hour and a half <laughs> away from the city and I can go home very easily and it's not like you know when I moved to San Francisco this is definitely like it'll be okay I'm trying to remind myself of that but still it's very stressful it's also very scary not gonna lie I don't know I'm just like a total worry wart and I worry about everybody all the time um, and so I also like being away from the people that I worry about all the time is gonna be a little hard for me but I'm gonna be strong I'm gonna be good <sighs> and I'm gonna stop 
crying. <laughs> Sorry, I had to take a step away just for a little bit of a breather. But anyways, another big exciting update is that my mom is officially a US citizen. And this is another thing that I don't think a single, <laughs> I don't think a single person in my life knew about this outside of my direct family. Cause again, it was just something that like, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know what I should or shouldn't like be open about with people. And I just also have this thing where if I'm anxious about something, it's like speaking it out is like, putting it out into the world and making it true almost so yeah I basically didn't talk about it with anybody <laughs> and that's been definitely not healthy for me either but excitingly everything is resolved and I'm so so proud we, it's basically been two three years of this journey of you know getting my mom to this place and I'm just so like happy for her and also incredibly proud of her like the work that she had to do to you know pass her test and everything was just like uh, so much and I yeah I that day was honestly just wild but we went to the immigration office in Philly uh, about a week ago and my mom took her civics test and all of that and I was just outside like having a full panic attack because I wasn't able to go in, only my mom and her lawyer. And so I had read online that it usually takes like 20 minutes and eventually 20 minutes became like a whole hour. And at this point I was like, like hyperventilating outside and like ready to <laughs> fully just explode. Um, and apparently um, she was like approved really quickly. Um, like you, she did a, f a couple of questions and then she was good to go. Um, and her lawyer basically asked if she could get her oath done that day. And the officer agreed because they were about to do another round anyways so they, they decided to like basically not tell anyone and have it be a surprise which was like it was a great moment but oh my gosh <laughs> waiting out there was so stressful but it was so amazing like having my mom come outside and like hold up her you know paper and just like everyone celebrating and like seeing everyone else celebrating too like that was so magical i got to see so many people just like so many families just like celebrating each other and it honestly was such an amazing moment that I will hold on to for a really long time um, and it also you know I think for me immigration and making immigration easier and more accessible um, I think is so important and I'm just so elated that like that's done you know and it's finalized it's official like yeah that's it's it's been like honestly a constant anxiety for me um for the past few years definitely but like since i was in high school and i found out that my mom wasn't a citizen and i've always had this like slight fear um especially with the political climate that something was going to happen and so yeah i just i'm very thankful to be in this position right now um and i also recognize that there are so many people who are waiting to be to have this moment and waiting to be in this position so yeah anyways those are the big life updates that i really wanted to talk about this video outside of that i'm sitting in front of my bookshelves this is probably the last video i will be posting in front of these bookshelves because i'm about to go through and pick out the ones that i want to bring with me to new york city so i thought i'd bring you all along on that little journey. I did just recently post a book haul, so I'm not going to talk about those books in this video because I literally just did, so those are already packed away. But yeah, I'm going to be going through all of these books. I am having a much smaller space than the, the space that I have here. Currently, I will definitely miss this room. Like, I, this bedroom is like so big <laughs> um and i definitely decorated it in like my dream aesthetic but i'm also excited for a new room to decorate and make my own i'm kind of envisioning a little bit more of a cottagey kind of 80s vibe we'll see we'll see how it comes out but anyways i need to truncate the amount of books that i am bringing with me 
because I just don't think I can fit all of these. And then I also have to do the same thing for my clothes. That's going to be a lot harder for me, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so we're going to save that for tomorrow. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so now the question really is, what books am I bringing to New York City? Um, okay, so looking at my bookshelf, I have all of my Korean books here. Those are, I think all of them are coming. I don't think I am planning on getting rid of any of those. I still want to read them all. So yeah, all of my Korean books. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think like what would I unhaul from this selection. I guess I can finally unhaul that uh, gender swapped Twilight <laughs> Life and Death. It's up there. I guess I'll just start taking some books. So we have... The Silence of Bones, The Court Dancer, Me, Be Book and Me. These are all Korean novels. Yolk by Mary H.K. Chue. Cannot get rid of that one, obviously. A couple previous Book of the Month picks. We have The Beautiful by Renee Audier. And The Last Story of Mina Lee. Very excited to still own these. My Wicked Fox books. I've been slowly making my way through this one. It's The Making of Asian America. It's like a history book. Some other favorites here. Almond, which is also uh, Yoongi. Read that one. Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Chue. Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Chue. Obviously, we have Jenny Han. have a couple David Yoon books. I actually still haven't read these. Can you believe? Um, I need to work on that. The Way You Make Me Feel by Maureen Goo. I love Maureen Goo. Then we're getting into some books that I haven't read yet. Um, I still have to read Edinburgh by Alexander Chi. Honestly, I just need to read something by Alexander Chi. I cannot believe I haven't done that yet. Um, and The White Book by Hong Kong. Uh, I just... I wish I liked Hong Kong as much as other people did. <laughs> and then I have all of these Korean graphic novels um, that I really need to just get to reading because <laughs> I've had them for so long. Ugh, my reading has been so bad this year. All right, so I've switched to my vlogging camera and we're gonna do some quick unhauling. Looking at this section, um, I don't need Crazy Rich Asians. I like this book, uh, but I never continued with the series and I never see myself like rereading it, you know? I just really like the film. Um, we also have my Summer of Love and Misfortune, which I've heard really not great things about, which is honestly what made me interested to read it, but I feel like if I'm going to read it, I might just do the audiobook. Then from in here, I think I'm going to, um, I'm going to get rid of, I think these, actually maybe these three, maybe all of these actually. Um, I really enjoyed Brooklyn but I never foresee myself rereading it. Same Get a Life Chloe Brown. I liked it but I'd rather pass it along. Same with The Blood Spell. Liked it but would rather pass it along and I start maybe I'll keep this one actually. Yeah I'll keep this one. And we have these ones. I don't know I know I said that I was gonna get rid of Twilight but I'm kind of like maybe I'll just keep it just in case I ever actually want to read it. And then these are my um uh, why am I blanking on Narnia books? There we go. These are my Narnia books from when I was a child, so I'm definitely keeping all of these. Now, here we have a little small middle grade section, and obviously will not be getting rid of my beloved Nevermore books, um, and I don't really foresee myself getting rid of any of the books here, to be honest. Is there anything? I mean, I guess... Hmm... Maybe Edenbrook because again, like it was really cute and I liked it, but I don't foresee myself like reaching for it to read again. So that one's got to go. And I really liked The Bone Witch, but I kind of feel the same about that one. Oh, this cover is so pretty though. Mm, I'll hold on to that one. Ugh, no, we're getting rid of it. <laughs> I can't just hold on to a book because it's pretty. Then we have Every Heart a Doorway, which is one of my favorite books of all time. I love this. Uh, so I'm going to hold on to that one. And then I have this like early edition of Down Among the Sticks and Bones, which I really liked. But I feel like I'm going to hold on to Every Heart a Doorway because I do see myself just wanting to keep that first book. But I don't feel like I need to keep all the other ones. So 
getting rid of that. Then over here we have um, some adult fiction and classics and I really don't see myself wanting to get rid of anything here as far as I can see. Um, and actually, I don't know, I'm kind of debating if I want to keep Legendborn or unhaul it because I really, really like this book, but again, I just don't think I'm going to reread it, you know? So I'd rather pass it along to someone who will get a really great first read out of this. Um, then we have Brandon Sanderson and Lee Bardugo, and all of those are coming with me. No thoughts about it. Um, there's my Nikolai. Then we have some more sort of fantasy books over here. And I don't really think I want to get rid of any of these. Like, I really enjoy either I read these books and love them, like Fireborn um, or like Rebecca which is very well loved, as you can tell. Um, or there are books that I still want to read, like Vita Nostra. So yeah, I'm gonna hold on to all of these. Um, over here, I think I am going to unhaul Rage of Dragons, just because I tried this one and I just couldn't really get into it. And I've been holding on to it for so long in the hopes that maybe I'll read it. Which is sad, it's like, oh, such a good chunky fantasy, and I love a chunky fantasy, but yeah, this one just isn't in the cards for me. And then we just have Harry Potter stuff, so down from there, we have some contemporaries, and again, any of these that I want to get rid of, I don't see anything that I don't want to keep. I have my Rainbow Rowell collection, Sarah Dessen some Alice Osman that I still need to read, my friend Francina's book, Smash It. So keeping all of those, then we have my K-pop albums. Those are all staying. Then over here, we have some books that I recently purchased that are like for my childhood. So I'm keeping those. I do think I'm going to get rid of this Summer of Salt book because I just, I've tried to read this for like years now and I just, I've never finished it. So goodbye. And then I'll move this chair, but over here we have manga, and um, I don't think I want to get rid of anything here. I actually just went through this area of my, of my bookcase and got rid of some manga, so all of these are ones I haven't read or want to read. So these are all the books I have to pack. I've already packed this section, which are my Korean books but I just have to pack the rest of these. So I got rid of a little bit at least. <laughs> Not as much as I think I would have liked to have gotten rid of, but I got rid of a bit. I do still have, I do still have this book spine over here, um, but I don't really know if I see any books that I want to get rid of. So yeah, I think these ones are all coming with me. Hello friends. So it has been a few days since I filmed that. And I'm coming at you from a new location. Um, yeah, <laughs> life has been wild these past few days. Really excited to share all these updates with you all. I actually do have one more vlog though in um, my Pennsylvania bedroom before I can get into all of my like moving vlog stuff. So I am really excited to share all of that with you. Um, I'm also like, a little bit scared to edit that last vlog because <laughs> to be honest I've been crying a lot um, I am definitely it's the first night and I have been dealing with a lot of homesickness uh, if you have any tips on navigating homesickness please send them my way I think this was this like really hit me so much harder than I was expecting it to like I mean I think in the video you can kind of tell that I was stressed and like really sad um to be leaving home but i think you know i i hadn't i hadn't been home for that long of a period of time since high school really like two years um and so in a lot of ways it's like i feel like i'm a freshman at college again like that sense of just like overwhelming sadness at not being home like i feel that um and i'm trying to remind myself that like i want to be here and that i'm excited to be here um at the same time like i really miss my family you know i love being at home i love hanging out with my mom and watching korean dramas i love catching up with my sister after school and um it's hard not to like have that and even though obviously you can FaceTime 
I don't know. It's just different and I'm struggling a little. So yeah, always let me know all of the, the tips that you might have. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for these next few videos, my final vlog, and then to kick off all the moving content. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've never really done like a sitting down life update kind of thing before. So um, it was really nice just to share a lot of like this side of my life with you guys. Um, and yeah, love you. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Bye.